Push-up standards vary depending on your branch of service. For afterburner workouts, use the standards demonstrated in this video to ensure maximum adaptations across the entire range of motion and to address weaknesses throughout the push-up. When taking your afterburner stage 1, 4, and 8 fitness tests, abide by the standards imposed by your specific branch of service. To set up your push-up, place your hands so the thumbs align under your shoulders. Rotate your hands slightly outward, positioning your elbows approximately 30 to 45 degrees aft when you descend in your push-up. The top position of the push-up is called the plank and will be used extensively in afterburner. This is also the commonly accepted rest position for most military fitness tests. In the plank, position your body so a single line approximately connects the back of your head, your shoulder blades, your hip, and your heels. We'll call this line the plank common line. You will maintain this common line throughout the down and up portions of your push-up whether you are scaling or not. At the bottom of the push-up, maintain the common line as a point between your sternum and mid-chest contacts the ground. With an engaged core, your hips will remain slightly off the ground at the bottom of the push-up. If you cannot perform a full range of motion push-up, Afterburner uses two scaling options. First, you can descend in the plank position to the bottom. At the bottom, Lower the knees to the ground and shift your weight slightly forward just above your kneecaps. Ensure the plank common line is set and execute the push-up. Maintain the common line throughout the scaled push-up. Reset the plank position at the top and then descend for another push-up. The push-up can be scaled further by maintaining the bent knee position on the way down and up instead of resetting to the plank at the top. Ensure you maintain the common line. Outside of not achieving the required range of motion, the most common error in the push-up is loss of the plank common line by either raising or sagging the hips. This can occur during a scaled push-up too. The image on the left shows maintenance of the common line through a scaled push-up. The image on the right shows a loss of the common line because the hips stay raised. As with push-ups, Baseline sit-up standards vary depending on your branch of service, including a range of positions at which the elbows can contact the legs at the top of the sit-up. For afterburner workouts, set up with knees bent to create an approximate 90 degree angle. Maintain hands, defined as all fingers at a minimum, in contact with shoulders throughout the sit-up. At the bottom, shoulder blades contact the ground. At the top, Touch your elbows to the top of your knees, breaking the vertical plane extending from your kneecaps as shown here. Feet can be anchored or unanchored, but remain consistent throughout afterburner so you can compare results between workouts. If your service-specific fitness test uses anchored sit-ups, use foot anchors for afterburner workouts. For your stage one, four, and eight tests, Abide by your service-specific standards.